Hello again. So here we have the typical ticket problem. Okay. So let's read it together. So suppose that a total of 19 people go to the theater. Suppose that these people consist exclusively of adults and children whose tickets go for $4 and $3 respectively. If the total expenditure in attending the theater is $64, how many adults and how many children were there? Okay, that's the question that we want to answer. Let's do that together. So whenever you're going to solve um, equations again, we have to give our variables names. Now we have to state what they mean, right? We know now from the statement of our question that we want to know how many adults there were and how many children. So we're going to let A represent the number of adults, okay? And we're going to let C be the number of children, okay? Okay. And they tell us, moreover, that there was a total of 19 people uh, that went to the theater. So however many adults there were, however many children there were, there must have been uh, 19 total. So A plus C must be 19. Now... They also tell us that the tickets for the adults go for $4 and the tickets for the children go for $3. So that means that the cost of an adult, the cost of the number of adults attending is 4 times the number of adults attending, 4 times A, right? And the cost of the children attending is 3 times the number of children, or in other words, 3C. And we know that since the total expenditure was $64, we know that this cost of attendance must be 64 for this group of individuals. Okay. So we have translated the content of this uh, problem into a system of equations, which we will now solve using, uh, we're going to start with substitution, and then we're going to proceed to, um, we're going to proceed to use um, well, we're going to solve it with substitution first, and then we're going to resolve it with Gaussian elimination. So you can see this technique. So you can see both techniques. Um, my opinion is that as long as you know one technique, it's good, you know. But I want you to be familiar with both. And if you can get good with both techniques, that'll be the best way to be. Okay? Okay. Anyways, without further ado, let's begin. So for the substitution technique, we're going to choose one of the equations that seems amenable to solving for one of the variables. In this case, the first equation um, seems most available, seems most amenable to solving for one variable. Okay, so from the first equation, right, we can get the following. We can say, okay, a plus c equals 19, okay? So then I want to get, let's say I get the A by itself, okay? So I'm going to do minus C, minus C, okay? I'm going to be left with just A equals and then 19 minus C, okay? And so you see here I have a relationship between the A and the C uh, that will allow us to replace the A in the second equation, you see? I'll be able to replace the A with this expression, okay? So now here, I'm going to substitute into my second equation, okay? So look at this. It's going to be 4 times my A, which will be 19 minus C, plus 3C. And that's going to equal to 64. So now, this left-hand side, we need, well, okay, first observation. The first observation I want you to notice from here 
is that we no longer have any dependence on A in this equation. No explicit dependence on A in this equation. We only have a dependence on C. And therefore, it is easy for us to solve this problem if it has, in fact, a solution. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to simplify it. So in order to do that, we're going to have to distribute here. We're going to have to ask what is 4 times 19 times 4 times negative C, and then um, plus 3C equals 64. But what is 4 times 19? Let's do that here together. I know that 4 times 9 is 36. So I bring down my 6 and I carry my 3. Okay? 4 times 1 is 4 plus 3 is 7. So I can state that 4 times 19 is 76. So that's 76, okay, minus 4C plus 3C equals 64. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this left-hand side by combining these like terms. Negative 4C plus 3C is negative C. So, so I get 76 minus C equals 64. Okay? Now, now what I have to do is I have to isolate this variable C. How am I going to do that? I'm going to subtract 76 to the other side. So minus 76 minus 76. Okay? Here, you can see that I'm subtracting two numbers, but the 76 has a larger absolute value than the 64, and so I know that when I perform this subtraction, it'll be a negative number. How am I going to get what, not, what, 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 the, what that number will be? Well, I'm going to subtract the absolute values uh, of these two numbers, the smaller from the bigger. So in other words, um, I'm going to do, do 76 minus 64, okay? So I'm going to have negative C, oops, is equal to 76 minus 64. Remember, we already know the sign's going to be negative, so I'm going to put my negative there. I know that the sign's negative because the 76 that I'm subtracting has the bigger absolute value than the 64. But how am I going to get the numeric part, how am I going to get the absolute value of this result is going to be by subtracting the absolute values of these two numbers, where I take the smaller absolute value subtract it from the larger one. Okay, so what is 6 minus 4? That's 2. What is 7 minus 6? That's 1. So I can see here that negative C is equal to negative 12. But in other words, what that's telling me is that when I divide both sides by negative 1, I'm going to get C equals 12. Okay, so that means since C equals 12, I can plug in here for my adults. A equals to 19 minus 12, and you can see that that's going to give me 7. So I can see now what the answer to this question is, okay? So in particular, a total of 12 children and 7 adults went on this trip to the theater, okay? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to redo the solution, but using Gauss elimination. Let's do that right away. So we recall that the Gauss elimination is a way that we can take one system of linear equations and convert it into an equivalent system of linear, equation, linear equations with the eventual goal of arriving at a state where um, one of the equations has the one variable basically alone, which we can then use to solve for the numeric value of that variable and then we can use that value to plug into the other equations and to solve for the uh, remaining variables, a process called back substitution. In this case, since there's only two variables, once we eliminate one variable, we only will be able to solve for that one variable's value, and then we just use the other equation to get the remaining variable, get the remaining variable value, okay? So without any further ado, let's get started, okay? So we remember that the rules of this game are as follows. I can interchange any two of the rows. That means that I could, for example, I could take this system and I could switch the rows 
and that would be an equivalent system. That is to say, it would be a system with the same solution set as this one. I could multiply any of these rows by a non-zero constant, okay? So I could multiply this first row by a non-zero constant. I could multiply the second one by a non-zero constant, okay? And I can replace any row by the sum of any two rows of the system. In this case, I'm using the word row to represent equation, okay? I just want to make that clear, okay? So let's look at this together. And again, remember, we're not, we're not, we, we can use these rules at random if we wanted to, but that would not be smart, right? Our objective is I want to figure out what number can I multiply one of these equations um, so that we can eliminate one of our variables in our next addition, okay? Right, if we did it at random, we would arrive at equivalent system, but we wouldn't get any closer to solving the problem, right? We have to do it with a reasoning behind it, okay? First of all, I don't want to do what I did last time, and I want to verify, okay, this first column is just A's, this first column is C's, so we're ready to go. Okay, I look at this equation, I look at this equation, and I could say, aha, if I want to, I could multiply this first equation by, let's say, negative 3, okay? If I did that, then in a step to come later, when I were to add, when I were to replace, let's say I replace this equation with the sum of these two, I would be left with 1a, because that would be negative 3a plus 4a, which would be 1a, but the negative 3c plus the 3c, that would eliminate the c from that sum, okay? So that's how I'm thinking about it. That's if I multiply the first row by negative 3. Let's do that, okay? So I'm going to notate that as well here. Negative 3 times my first row is going to be my new first row, okay? Now one of the things I also want you to notice is that I always keep my system together. As I go through these calculations, I always... Uh, keep my system together so I can keep track of everything I'm doing, okay? And so I don't forget where I am in the process. So, for example, this first row, I'm going to put it in my negative 3. So it'll be negative 3a minus 3c. And then what's 3 times 19? 3 times 19, well, 9 times 3 is 27, so that'll be 7. This will be 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So I can see that 3 times 19 is 57, so this will be negative 57, okay? I didn't say that I was going to do anything to the second equation, so I bring it unchanged. 4a plus 3c equals 64. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace... For our purposes, I'm going to replace my row 1 with the sum of these two rows. And I'm going to leave my row 2 untouched. So I'm going to replace row 1 with R1 plus R2. Okay? So if I add these two, boop, that'll be just A. Because negative 3A plus 4A is 1A because negative 3 plus 4 is 1. When I add these two, boop, they're gone. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So it'll be 0c, and that doesn't contribute anything. What about when I add these two? Aha! I'm adding two numbers with opposite signs. So I look at the absolute values of these numbers, and I figure out which one's bigger, at least in terms of absolute value. The absolute value of 57, of negative 57 is 57. The absolute value of 64 is 64. In terms of absolute value, the 64 is bigger, so I know the result of this addition will be a positive number. And what will be the value? The value will be 64 minus 57. I ask myself, can I take away 7 from 4? I can't, because 7 is bigger than 4. So I borrow. This becomes a 5, and this becomes a 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay, so I can see that negative 57 plus 64 is positive 7. So look at this. By adding those two equations, I got the A by itself, and it equals 7. 
Now I bring down my second equation, which of course had nothing done to it, as I didn't specify anything to be done with it in these instructions. And what I want you to realize from there again is how these instructions are helping guide me with how I go from this system to this system to this system. So for example, if I was going to study from these notes, I can, I can know exactly how I got from here to here, from here to here, and I can retrace my thought process. And if I make a mistake, I can also see, okay, if I go from here to here with this, is that consistent? If I go from here to here with this, is that consistent? And so if I made a mistake somewhere, I can find it. Okay, so now, once I'm here, see, I know what the value of A is. It's 7. So I can then use this value of A to find what C is in this equation. So if I take A equals 7 and I insert it here, 4 times 7 is 28. So I have 28 plus 3C is equal to 64. So now my objective is to solve for C. I'm going to subtract 28 from the left. I'm going to subtract 28 from the right, okay? And I'm left with 3C equals that. Let's do that here together. Let me put this nice. Okay. What is 64 minus 28? So first of all, I'm going to borrow from this 6. It'll become a 5, and this will become a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. Okay. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I can see that 3C is equal to 36. And you can see when you divide that by 3, both sides, you're going to get C equals to 12. And so you can see that we again arrived with the same result we got before. There are 7 adults and 12 children in this trip to the theater. I hope you have enjoyed this example. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much.